Hi everyone, and welcome to the part 2. I uh, hope you enjoyed the part 1. And now let's try to make a, a little bit different uh, texture, okay? So we'll be making uh, texture 2. It looks basically like this. I think that something like this should be our final result or, you know, something that is uh, very close to that because I don't think we're gonna, you know, go with the, exactly the same values I used, obviously. Um, but, um, you know, we'll be aiming to get something like this or better, okay? So let me show you what I'm using it for, actually. So uh, I've got this character set up. And I've got this animation essentially. Okay, so imagine the meteor or some sort of projectile is coming down and then it hits the surface. I've added some uh, sparks there as well. Uh, you know, and doing some blueprints for it just to, you know, add a little bit more uh, effects to it. Okay, so let me jump to Photoshop now. Uh, we're gonna use this. I think this is uh, one of the patterns or generators from Substance. I'm gonna wrap it around and use the edge uh, detection as well. Uh, we're gonna randomize it a little bit and erase some of the parts and just to make this uh, texture not to be you know very uniform but you know just adding randomization essentially. I'm gonna use slow blur to uh, blur those edges outwards and here I'm just you know manipulating a lot of uh, data so I'm you know using erosion and I'm also uh, distorting the edges so they're not all straight and in the end I'm just adding uh, colors to it okay cool so let's jump into substance now okay so I'm gonna start with cells for node I'm gonna scale it down a bit and I want to use a shape mapper next okay so basically I want to uh, I want to wrap this around the circle okay the pattern mount is way too high so I'm just gonna use um, let's try maybe two okay the thing I don't like is that it's got two too many details here so what I want to do actually before we're gonna plug it into shape mapper I want to use transform okay and in transform I just want to stretch it um, vertically okay so I'm gonna apply 200 here while having this selected even more maybe maybe let's go for um, 150 next cool so I went for 200 first and then 150 okay so kind of getting this and now I'm gonna use edge detect which gives me something like that but I'm just gonna you know uh, zero the edge roundness invert it and I'm gonna adjust the edge width as well one okay let's see if I can go lower 0.5 Oh, interesting okay I'm just gonna set it to one then cool okay so now what I want to do I want to get rid of the outsides here okay so I'm just gonna blend it with soft circle which is shape and that thing that I cannot pronounce paraboloid I think <laughs> okay and I want to set it to multiply so that works and the other thing is I don't like this bit in the middle so I'm just gonna get rid of that one as well so I'm gonna blend it I'm gonna copy and paste the shape node I'm gonna set this to subtract but I'm gonna scale it way down to here um, and I think I'm just gonna run it through levels as well because I need a lot more contrast in uh, in this so I'm gonna do basically this okay and 
Okay, so now what I want to do, I just want to get rid of um, yeah, the data from the texture from some random places. Okay, so I'm going to blend it with uh, the pattern I'm going to design in a second and set it blend to subtract. I'm going to try maybe simple parallel noise with some levels uh, just to see if that's going to work. So obviously I need to tweak the levels to be way more contrasty and maybe lower the scale on the pellet noise. So I think that could work, but I'm actually deleting too much data now. So I just need to go back here and drag it over. Okay, so I need this texture to be I need a lot more white space and uh, or maybe equal amount between uh, white and um, black and colors in that texture. So that gives me this. Uh, I'm going to use warp next. And for the warp, actually I'm going to drag the cells for again and by running through blur node. As you can see, the warp intensity is way too high. And now what I want to do, basically, I like this texture for um, for this kind of warp because it's got those straight edges. And what it's going to do is actually going to offset um, some of the edges here. As you can see, I'm tweaking it and instead of having like a soft um, offset, we're actually having, having some hard uh, edges as well which is what I want. Now I can go back and maybe play with the intensity. So those edges will be even uh, more jagged. Okay, obviously the scale of it is maybe a little bit too much for my taste, so I'm just gonna reduce it. And now play with the intensity on that warp node. Let me actually try different values. Maybe actually we want to get a um, higher value for that one because it adds um, a lot more details. By then it depends what you're going for really. Uh, so I'm actually going to go for the higher value, but I'm going to stick. Yeah, I'm just going to stick to the low intensity on the warp. Okay, even less like 0.03 because I want just a little offset. I don't want to offset it too much. Okay, so I think this bit that we get um, managed to get rid of earlier is a little bit, you know, it seems like a perfect circle. So maybe let's try to uh, delete some parts from it again. Okay, so I'm going to go for shape again, uh, soft circle, um, maybe levels, just in case if we need some extra control. And I'm actually going to run it through warp node. And for the warp, I'm going to use a parallel noise. I'm going to go down with the scale because I need, you know, just this circle uh, with the warp. OK, so I'm just going to scale down the circle as well. Plug this in and see how that's going to work. And now I can go back to the shape and, you know, start increasing that circle. Um, I need a lot more contrast. That's why we've got levels here. Okay, so we can have something like this and now we can obviously go into this warp node and start adding some values here. So as you can see, we ma we're managing to get rid of a lot of uh, data and make that circle a little bit less perfect. Okay, so we still got this arc here, but I'm not too bothered at this point uh, about it. Maybe later on, if I still don't like it at the end, I can go back and, you know, redesign this shape. 
Uh, but if you want to do it now, you can just go into pedaling noise and maybe increase the scale of it. Or maybe you just leave it like this, okay? So let's just continue. And the next thing, I think those edges are just a little bit too sharp, so I'm gonna run it through blur with a low value, like uh, maybe 0.5, quality set to 1. And now it's time to actually, you know, start getting some of the blurs on the edges. So I'm gonna uh, use slope blur next. And I'm gonna go for this soft circle again. Uh, ramp up the samples and I'm gonna use uh, mode max. And I'm getting this. The next thing would be to revert this. I'm just gonna copy paste that node and set the value to minus. And obviously I'm just gonna blend those two together. I'm gonna use add linear. So we're getting nice highlight here and some uh, blur as well. Okay. The only thing I don't like is actually this uh, highlight is like everywhere. So maybe let's keep this one, run it through a different blending node, like uh, subtract maybe, or um, let's try different ones. Or maybe that one will do. And then here, let's have blend node. This one's set up to add linear, and then we're gonna blend those two together. And we're gonna have a random mm, highlights, okay? So I'm gonna set this to add. And now when I tone this down, can see that we are re revealing the texture we are revealing that texture but we keep those highlights so i think that looks pretty cool and the next thing i just want to make it uh, a little bit distorted so i'm going to use uh, warp and i'm going to just use cells for again you can just go back uh, to what we designed previously and use the same setup for this but i'm just going to do it again so this with blur and plug it into uh, the gradient input in the uh, warp node. And now we're just, you know, offsetting some of the edges. If we want them to be a bit more, uh, you know, jagged, then we can play with a with a blur. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Mm. And now maybe let's try to um, run it through gradient map. In a gradient map, I'm just going to click here and go for some red-ish color and an orange, maybe. And transition, I'm going to pick smooth and smoothness of one. Okay, so I think it's got, you know, too much detail, so I'm just going to go back in my graph to where we have maybe shape mapper and try to uh, you know reduce the amount as you can see we could get uh, various different uh, patterns with this approach okay i think we could benefit from having a little bit more uh, blur around here so i'm just gonna go to our slow blur grayscale and maybe increase the intensity so this one's actually going inward, so I just want a little bit. And the one's going outward, maybe I'll just add um, a bit more. To have something like this, okay? And when we're, where we're blending those together, maybe we increase the opacity of it so we get a, a lot more uh, highlighted areas as well. Okay, as you can see, we are losing some data here. So and before we plug it into the gradient, we could uh, also run it through another blend with the shape node. Um, small circle and run it back in. And in the blend node, we can set it, set it to multiply. Um, but also we can um, have levels. So we have the, we could add contrast to this uh, circle.
Okay, so now we got a smooth transition from this texture to the um, black areas and obviously we can just scale down this uh, circle if we want. If you want to, you know, have a, a little bit different uh, pattern there, okay? The other thing what we could do, we could have a, a glow after our gradient map. If you would like to have this colorized and, you know, pick something that is uh, kind of orange or yellowish and just play with the settings of this glow. Okay, so I've imported this texture into the engine just to see how it's gonna, you know, behave uh, with the material. And I'm quite happy with the results, so I'm hoping, you know, this texture creation process is gonna um, help you a little bit with uh, your texture creation, okay? Alright, bear in mind that you can always take that texture to the Photoshop and, you know, maybe cut out some stuff you don't like and basically modify it to whatever you need it for, okay? Cool, thanks for watching.